2022 looks like it's going to be a nice year for first-person shooters, the kinds that I like anyway. I liked Shadow Warrior 3 a lot, there's some good under-the-radar stuff coming out soon. Forgive Me Father just came out, which is exciting. I did a review of the Early Access version last year, and it's great to see it finally coming out and getting some love. Speaking of Early Access, we're here to talk about another shooter that just went public. Warstride Challenges, which launches in Early Access on April 19th for PC players on Steam, and will also be at PAX from April 21st to the 24th, so if you're going to be there, you can try it out. I played a demo of it last year, thought it showed some promise, and now that it's public, it's time to talk about it. Warstride Challenges is sponsoring this video, and that's great because I'm happy to talk about this one and bring their game to some new eyes. If you want to check out the game, please check out the link in the video description. Help me out with those stats, you know? Like my last sponsored video, I'll show off the game and what it's all about, show all the stuff there is to enjoy, and if I have any criticisms, I'll let them be known. Warstride Challenges is a new indie FPS made by Dream Powered Games, a French developer made up of a small team. They described their game as a mix of Doom, Super Meat Boy, and Trackmania. And I gotta say, in my short time doing this, I've had a lot of developers pitch their indie games to me, and this is definitely one of the most accurate descriptions I've heard. You've got big guns and demons and fast movement, the game is very skill-based, there's a lot of repetition and learning and strategizing, and the whole thing is built on time trials. Levels are short, fast, and intense. In the current build, there's a lot of levels to choose from, and when the game officially releases, they're planning to have 180 available speedrunning challenges. So, like I said earlier, I got to play the demo version last year as they were getting feedback from FPS players and speedrunners. I'm no speedrunner, that's not a secret. My coordination is pretty crap, and my accuracy is even worse when I'm trying to play fast. So you might think I'd be terrible at this game, and I wouldn't like it. Well, I'm not great, that's true, but I think one of the strongest aspects of Warstride Challenges is that even though the entire game is based on speedrunning, it's actually really fun to play casually, and it becomes addicting as you keep trying to do better. It does a good job of showing you all the techniques you're going to need, because a lot of people don't know how to move like speedrunners. The very first thing they show you is using jump to increase your speed. The bunny hopping isn't really true Quake-style bunny hopping, it's just jumping. But I'm curious if executing actual Quake bunny hops increases your speed even more. It's not just bunny hops, you've also got a few powers to help you through the challenges. Slow motion, which, you know, does what you think it does, and an energy push that breaks doors and kills enemies in front of you. These powers are not made to break the game, the challenges are actually built around their consideration. If you want to push yourself to get a good time, which is the point after all, you gotta figure out when and where to use your powers. And you don't have every power in every challenge, which is nice because it makes the game not always play the same way. One level might give you slow motion that lasts 3 seconds, another level might have a 12 second slow motion. You might have one push ability, you might have five. The weapons you have also vary from challenge to challenge. One level will be entirely pistol based, and another will give you a shotgun for higher HP enemies. An assault rifle, which is really fun, and the carabine? Alright, I guess. Anyways, completing each level gives you a medal, and very quickly I got hooked on trying to get platinum medals. I tried my best to get all of them, but I just couldn't. I'd say 95% of the challenges that I've completed I got platinum, but sometimes, man, after 15 to 20 minutes of repeating the same 13 second challenge, I just gotta say gold is good enough and I'm gonna move on to see more of the game. Warstride Challenges is a demanding game. The enemy hitboxes are not forgiving. If you're off by the smallest amount, your shot won't connect. 
In other games, that wouldn't matter so much, but in a speedrun challenge, a small mistake like that can be the difference between silver and gold. Starting levels are short, but as you unlock more challenges, you end up with a series of rooms that are a minute and a half long, demanding intense memorization. As the levels get longer, the stress starts to build, and that drive towards perfection can get really exhausting, but it keeps you going. It's been hard to put this game down. You're not just competing against yourself, though. You can also see the best times of your Steam friends. Type in the player name you want to track, and a hologram of that person's best time appears in every level they've completed. It's a neat little way to drive yourself to play better. Midnight is currently trying to beat my times. Good luck with that, buddy. A lot of the challenges in this game feel pretty short, as they're getting you used to your weapons and abilities. And as you get more medals, you'll unlock additional levels and bonus challenges that last longer and have more complicated sequences to learn. After completing the initial levels of each stage, you'll see that there are extra levels to play that require more medals than you have, like a star door in Super Mario 64. That means you have to play through the hard version of some of these stages, which isn't what I initially thought it was going to be. I figured it would just be stricter time limits, but there's a lot more going on. Sometimes it'll take a level, add more enemies, and make you play it backwards. Sometimes the level has completely changed and it feels like a different challenge. Things get pretty creative. Once you finally have enough medals to unlock the extra levels, you'll find action-packed challenges where you have to kill a bunch of enemies in a certain amount of time. I spent a lot of my playtime in these because it was hard to really perfect the path I wanted to take, given my personal limitations with moving and shooting quickly. The bonus levels can be especially brutal, at least for me. The platforming one took me forever to pass. It was fun though made me regret changing my keybinds to put slide on left control instead of left shift. I think I screwed up my hand, actually. This is where I ended up having the most fun, because I was playing with a friend here, and it's really funny to have someone calling bullshit on your victory, thinking they can do better, and then you get into a back-and-forth rivalry. It's great. For an early access game, I think Warstride Challenges offers way more than an acceptable amount of content and polish. The game runs very smoothly, playing it here at 120 frames per second in 1440p resolution. No stuttering, no crashes, no AI glitches. Not in my experience, anyway. I think the art style is nice, though I'd be lying if I said I didn't wish it had some more location variety. You spend a lot of time in the same looking caves, but the challenges themselves keep things fresh. AI is a difficult thing to discuss because the game is all about clearing the level as quickly as possible. It's not like you're getting into big fights with big powerful enemies. If you're playing well, you're one-hit kill headshotting everyone you see and flying by. The difficulty comes more from the navigation, planning, memorization, and accuracy. This isn't a game that needs to have really smart AI to fight against. The music is appropriately metal, Doom 2016 influenced fast metal tracks. They work, they're fun, I do get a bit tired of hearing the same song over and over as I repeat challenges for half an hour, but there are no annoying melodies that make you hate what you're hearing. It's all just fine. Maybe it's because I'm not a big metalhead myself, so I don't resonate with it that much, but other than the repetitiveness on replaying challenges, the music is fine. Once you have a handle on how the game plays, you can check out the level editor, which is still a work in progress. I have no clue how to design anything. You can't say this isn't a wonderful inclusion, though. I imagine this game could have a long life if there's people who dedicate themselves to level creation. I'd love to see some competitions eventually. It's this part of the video where normally I would launch into a list of criticisms and suggestions for what to do going forward. I just don't really have much. A few things here and there. I think it's because over the last year, the devs have already been working with FPS players and speedrunners to polish this game into a solid project. And I think they got it. Personally, I would appreciate an option to make the reticle larger, because at the current size, it gets lost in the chaos. And if you have any vision problems, it could be really hard to see. But if they don't want to add that option, I can understand. It would make things a little easier, and this is a skill-based game through and through. Some of the tutorial levels, as I mentioned in my demo feedback last year, are, in my opinion, too short. 
I think if you're teaching someone how bunny hopping makes you move faster, you should give them more than a hallway that takes two seconds to pass. Let them move around a bit and feel it. Sometimes the explosions obstruct your view and make it impossible to see where you're going. I ended up having to memorize my jump direction to be able to blindly jump through the fire and make it through a door or a crawl space. It was pretty awkward. I wouldn't say it happens a lot, but it was enough to be a little frustrating. I think the red skull challenges need to have a nice prominent sound effect when picking up the skulls so you can confirm it by ear. And I think the skulls should have a more forgiving area to register a pickup. Since they're on the ground and this game is first person, it's really easy to miss them when you're moving fast. With all the explosions and guns and metal music, you just can't hear that little click sound it makes. I don't think I should have to look at the skull counter to verify that I picked up the skull I just passed. I think they need some interface changes. The text layout is really basic. But honestly, those are probably my biggest criticisms. Because I think the game as it currently is, in early access, is super solid and totally worth checking out. I can see a lot of my viewers putting a good amount of time into Warstride challenges. If you obsess over getting as many platinum medals as possible, you're gonna get so much value out of this game. This level here took me 20 minutes to get down, and I loved every second of it. There's a lot more content coming, as you can see each challenge has a hard mode and then several more higher level variations that are coming later. I can't imagine how crazy this stuff is going to get. I'm already struggling, but there's going to be plenty of material for the masochists. I want to thank Focus Entertainment for sponsoring this video. I'm always happy to do a video like this for a game I actually enjoy. And Warstride Challenges has been a blast to play so far. I'm excited to see where it goes. Remember to check out the link in the video description, follow this channel, and I'll see you next time.